Hello friends. Today I am going to explain equations of straight line motion at constant acceleration and we will see how these equations can be used in real life cases. In order to derive the equations of straight line motion at constant acceleration consider an example where a block has an initial velocity of u and after t time let's say it has reached a velocity of v and assuming the constant acceleration is being maintained by the person and let s be the displacement of the block. We have already learned about acceleration, velocity and displacement in the previous videos. If you are not clear about them, please check them out. So the acceleration a is equals to dv by dt or delta v by delta t which is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time taken. On simplifying this equation we will get v equal to u plus at. So with this equation we can find final velocity with given initial velocity, acceleration and time. And since velocity is given by dx by dt if we substitute this in equation 1 and on integrating this equation with proper limits we can find displacement in terms of initial velocity acceleration and t which is given by s equal to ut plus half at square and there is one more equation which we can get by squaring equation 1 and on simplifying this and using equation 2 we can get the relation v square minus u square equal to 2 as so these three equations are called as equations of motion for a straight line motion at constant acceleration now let's apply these equations on a freely falling problem. Let's say a pokemon ball is being dropped from the top of the building and let's say it hits the ground after t seconds. The velocity of the ball increases in the downward direction at a constant rate because the acceleration due to the gravity is a constant value. If the ball is just left at the top of the building without giving any additional velocity then we can consider initial velocity to be zero. And if we take the y axis in the upward direction then acceleration will be negative z. And the value of acceleration due to gravity for earth is 9.8 meter per second square. And just before the impact with the ground the ball has velocity v in the negative y direction. So we can find that v equal to gt. And the time taken to reach the ground is given by v by g which is also called as time of descent. Now take the second equation. Here displacement is equal to the height of the building and its direction is along negative x axis. So s is equal to minus h and we can find the value of h as half gt square from which we can find the time of descent as root of 2h by g and from these two equations we can find that v equal to root of 2gh. So we can say that as the height of the building increases the velocity of impact will increase and the time of descent will also increase with the height of the building. Please note that these equations are derived without considering air resistance. Now let's consider another case where the ball is thrown straight up with a velocity of u meter per second. In this case the ball will reach a maximum height h and after reaching the maximum height it will return back as a freely falling body. At maximum height the velocity is equal to zero and let's say the velocity when it returns back is v1 and the time taken to go to the maximum height is called time of ascent and the time taken to return back from the maximum height is called time of descent. So writing the equations of motion during the time of ascent that is with initial velocity u and final velocity 0 we can get time of ascent is equal to u by z and the maximum height reached by the ball can be given by this equation or we can use another equation v square minus u square equal to 2as and we can find h as u square by 2g. Both of these equations will give the same value of h. So the return motion of the body will be same as that of the freely falling body case. Since it is already solved we can use those equations. So eliminating maximum height h from these two equations we can get that u equal to v which means the velocity we have given to the ball initially will be equal to the return velocity of the ball. For example if you have thrown a ball with 4 meter per second then it comes back with the same velocity 4 meter per second but the direction will be opposite. And also we can observe that time of ascent is equal to time of descent. So please take a look at the summary and try to solve the practice problems. Thank you. Please subscribe for more videos and if you like the video please click on the like button and share.